Hello! Today's video in English is, um, is an interview with a Cypriot um, artist, global artist, who currently resides in New York, but he's visiting our small island for the second time. Beautiful island. Beautiful island. Of course, you are Cypriot. <laughs> what were you about to say? <laughs> Today I'm interviewing Yorgos Pelabaisiotis. How, how do you pronounce your name in English? Pelabaisiotis. Yorgos? Yorgos Pelabaisiotis. Pelabaisiotis. Yorgos is a Cypriot who has emigrated to the US. He's been living in New York since 1995. Right. He's a well-known artist in New York, but recently we got to know him in Cyprus as well. Last year he visited the island with one exhibition, art exhibition, with the title Beyond Gender and Sexual Orientation from New York to Nicosia. I met Yorgos last year through my TV show. I visited his um, art exhibition. I experienced the whole experience because it's an experience to visit Yorgos exhibition. And this year, uh, when I found out that Yorgos is again in Cyprus with a new proposal, with a new artistic proposal this time, I asked him for an interview for my YouTube channel because I really do love your art, Yorgos. Oh, thank you so much. Welcome. Tell me about yourself at the beginning, because these videos in English are viewed, are viewed by people, um, not only Cypriots. Okay, so... A I... brief introduction to who Yorgos Belabaishodis is. Yes, I left uh, Cyprus in 95, where I attended uh, a Parsons School of Design. In New I, York. In New York, I did my BFA in fashion as soon as I graduated. I was selected by Alexander McQueen's uh, team to be part of uh, uh, his uh, creative team when he was going to present his first collection in New York because they always used to present the collection in Paris. So my career in fashion flourished only just by the collaboration with Alexander McQueen. I had a 10 years um, very good career. I worked with Donna Karan. I presented collections with uh, Oscar de la Renta, Todd Oldman, Ralph Lauren, um, in collaborations, especially one that I did. Um, uh, my collection was done with yards that were made out of recycled oh. plastic uh, bottles and glass. You are so <clears throat> much into recycling, huh? You can see that in your new and your new paintings in your new collection. Yes, actually, the previous exhibition also was done on recycled wood, pieces of wood. I didn't know. This yes, time that, I know. <laughs> yeah, that, that one too. All the paintings I create are done on on wood that I collect from the streets of New York that people live outside their houses to be collected by the trash uh, collectors. And instead of the trash collectors, Yorgos goes by, takes the good and gives it life. Yes, and that's something that stimulates me a lot. The, the, and, and actually, I now cannot paint on canvas that I go to an art store and buy. You do not? Uh, because I, I need to feel the connection with the wood. And, and because I apply plaster on the wood, to prepare the uh, surface, many times I can tell you that when I do that, I see I see the creation. So I have this bond with the wood, which helps me um, explore the creative idea that I have. So you started your uh, career as a fashion designer, fashion designer, working with huge names on the industry, and then further on you moved. Uh, without, I know his story, that's why I'm, I'm talking ahead, without even um, designing it or thinking of it, you Correct. found yourself being a composer, a music composer. Yes, I always loved music and I, I would always listen to music and even, you know, at school when I would have three hours uh, sessions, I al always had uh, headphones because music help, helps me paint the world the way I want to feel it and I don't have any other no noise pollution or interference. I think you are a, a whole round artistic person. Oh, that thank you. That you combine all the arts. Thank you. 
So uh, I was doing fashion, I was working on a movie, doing the costumes, the director at some point was having a difficulty finding the specific mood on a music piece that he wanted to use on the, uh, on the movie. And then I had access to a recording studio. Uh, in, in your own house? Which was in my own house. Because uh, my partner... He had access. He played with his partner's toys. <laughs> That's rather scandalous, the way you say it. <laughs> no, musical toys, musical instruments. Yeah, be specific, please. Not all the toys. So Why not? I wa- well, those toys too. But in this specific moment, I was playing with music toys. You went into the recording studio. Studio, and then without... Uh, no, uh, I didn't know chords, I didn't know how to write music, I didn't know how to read music. I sat there, but I had the sound in my ears. Uh, so I worked on a piece, it took me endless hours, I created the 20 seconds of music and then before I um, showcased it to the director, I played it to Anthony when he returned Anthony back. Anthony is his partner, yes. his lifelong partner. From his, uh, he was on a business trip uh, and then he said you should be doing this for a living and that was the moment where I knew that in a way my cycle in fashion was closing and a new cycle was opening. Um, one of the, and this is an element that I use a lot in my paintings, like cycles. in these, the cycles, like in this series, I use them as the halo that they use uh, when they portray saints. Um, and I started composing. In two years, I was composing for BBC, and then a year later, BBC. Yes, I with Anthony we wrote the theme music for Piers Morgan for his show that he was doing for BBC uh, and it was broadcasted in 120 countries around the world. Wow. So that was a good mark in my career, but also for my insecurity because you have to realize that even now, I don't know if it's an insecurity, but because I am very conscious and I'm a very responsible person because if I will exploit my artwork, I want people to feel that I respect them for having them seen what I present them. And I think this responsibility makes you maybe sometimes feel a little bit insecure. But it's a good thing. It's I think. creative. Yours. Yes. It's creative because once you believe that you are, you have come somewhere, you are someone, and you forget that you are a revolving, a, an evolving artist all the time, then I think you, it's not so easy to create it. Yes, you're dead. Yeah. I think you don't have any more energy. Yeah. Because I think sometimes, uh, and this is the reason why I never sketch, I just go into the main painting, but this nervousness that you feel, this insecurity, this is what stimulates you to break the barriers, to break the box that you're in. Because sometimes fear creates testosterone, testosterone <laughs> makes you explode and go beyond your own normal or the expected. So this is all about going beyond. <laughs> beyond. Yorgo, how, how did you uh, jump again or open the new cycle from fashion to music and then from music to art? Okay, I'll tell you. So I did... To fine arts. Yes, I, fine arts. I, I, I worked... Uh, you know, heavily in music for 10 years. Uh, After CNN, um, we wrote songs, we wrote uh, one of Lara Fabian's biggest hits uh, that became number one in various countries. Um, But I felt, again, it's interesting, in, in 10 years, so I did fashion 10 years, and before that I did economics almost 10 years of my life, Uh, And then I did the music in 10 years, and then I felt that that cycle closed. And and to be honest, I was going through a major depression. Uh, I don't know why or how, but I felt that I needed to find the ultimate freedom in expressing myself. And this is where I started painting. How much time ago did you start painting? Listen, I was always drawing. I mean, my no, no, no. I mean, wh- when did you started? Uh, when did you start uh, being uh, a painter? Uh, uh, when did the cycle of ba- painting begin? Okay, the cycle started. I mean, full on because now I'm I'm almost solidly focused on the painting. 
uh, unless something interesting comes musically okay. wise. So I would say full on um, three three years, three to four years. So we have six to seven years to enjoy your patriotic <laughs> before, paintings before the be next move because then he's going to <laughs> <laughs> then a new circle might <laughs> open and then you're you're going to go into a new adventure yes and carry us with you i think so i don't know but i i do enjoy this and i feel that i still have a lot to give and a lot to to express but uh, yes i think with uh, with the fine arts i found the ultimate freedom of expression because in fashion you have the female figure uh, you have a person that has needs has requests uh, that you have to um, basically address acknowledge dress and address dress and address <laughs> correct dress and address, and address. Okay, not address address, address. <laughs> And then you have music, you have the music rules, the chords, uh, not that they limit you, but it's not the ultimate. There are some rules, some formulas that you need to follow, but when it comes to the fine arts, you have the ultimate freedom. There is not even 1% of restriction on how to express uh, something and what, or even your subject may be. Because, again, uh, it's an expression that no one has uh, uh, control over it. I stare at your paintings through the lens. You can see the painting in the middle. Which this is... One there, yeah. Yes. Tell me about it. What's okay. the name of it? Okay, that's uh, Dianthus, uh, which is an English word, but it's based uh, on two Greek uh, roots which means um, Dai comes from Dios, which is uh, divine, God, and Arthos, which is the flower. Basically, it's God's flower. And uh, my exhibition is uh, Flesh versus Spirit. Uh, this is the title of the ex exhibition. Of the upcoming exhibition. Flesh versus Spirit. This exhibition will um, premiere that's what we we'll call it. Yes, yes. It <laughs> we'll will premiere, premiere on uh, Tuesday, the 17th of March, 2020, in Limassol City, in Galerie Morphy. Morphy, yes. At 7 p.m. 7 p.m. So, uh, we said f flesh versus spirit. Flesh is who we are externally and how we present ourselves and we express ourselves, um, driven by... Um, uh, habits driven by our sexuality, driven by our needs, and then the spirit is who we are internally, um, and that comes with the divine, comes with the uh, with the sacred, comes with the superficial, but also comes with, in a way, the religion, religion that controls our spirit. And I find that these two elements, the flesh and the spirit need to be linked together because this is when the human being can have equilibrium but because of uh, social and religious institutions that control the spirit in in our case the religion they tend to separate these two which uh, i don't think uh, gives the ability to the humankind to be complete so when we go back to this painting we see that there is the um, male uh, the the male um, uh, face uh, face or the head is male uh, anyway. yes the, uh, head is the male. portrayal of the male and then we see the female reference below and my intention of this creation is to show that um, this is not the same this is a human being that uh, can be either a man or a woman or it could be the creature that has both and the male and the female which all of us have and the male and the female hormone but it can actually practice spirituality without any barriers which is something that in our case our religion religious institution should be preaching but actually they do not because we see that uh, the woman is um, is treated in a much lower level with inferiority than the male. This is why 
in, in our church the priest is male, uh, the woman... He's talking about Greek Orthodox Church or Anatolic uh, Church, yes. Anatolic Orthodox Church. Yes, the woman uh, inside the church has uh, um, limitations. limitations and also territorial restrictions. There are areas in the church that the woman is not allowed to go and... Um, or another thing is that if the woman has her period, which is the moment where... The woman she, is menstruating. Yes, uh, she is going to be able to reproduce, which if there is something divine, I think one of the most divine uh, um, operations of the female kind is the ability to give birth to another human. And the woman is criticized... Um, especially some years ago, she used to be considered dirty and she shouldn't be entering the church rather than be embraced and actually celebrated and, and also protected by the church. And, and we see that historically, uh, humankind before the establishment of the religion... And before patriarchy. And be, before patriarchy, correct. Um, the humankind... Uh, was idealizing the female figure with the, all these statues that you see of the goddesses of fertility. So for them, it was something divine and probably much higher than the ability of the man to go and hunt uh, animals. That the fact the woman was able to give birth and reproduce another human person. Primitive societies were matriarchal. Very true. And the, the goddesses were women. Very true. And but nowadays, that we still have the relics of patriarchy, um, Abrahamic religions and Judaic and Christian religions are um, uh, patriarchal yeah, ones. Yes, yes. the male domination. And so again, for this exhibition, I'm not trying to, uh, to preach anything. Religion is religion. But I want to showcase that the divine uh, that comes with the spirit and the flesh that comes with who we are as personalities, as presence, should go together without any limitation at all uh, when it comes to expressing our, ourselves. So once again, I think the equilibrium in humankind must, uh, should, can be accomplished once there is acceptance by the society. Yorgo. I, I attended the premiere of your uh, artwork, uh, art exhibition last year, and it was an experience. It was an aesthetic experience, not only visual, but also, also auditory, and all my senses were enhanced. What are you, what, what should we expect for this year's exhibition? Okay, for, for this year, again, I have composed the the theme of the exhibition. So during the exhibition, there's going to be a sound, which is a, a track that I created specifically capturing the aesthetic of my work and the aesthetic of my concept. Um, and I tend to use lights to create atmosphere because um, the same way that I, when I paint, I am not interested to showcase my uh, painting abilities, but I am more focused on, on capturing the feeling, the inner of the subject. And this is what talks to me, and I believe this is what will talk to the, um, to the viewer of the work. The same way I feel that um, the presentation, the way I display my art, has to be an experience. And it has to have the sound, it has to have the smell, well, and it has to have the visual stimulation. And it's, it's an experience that it's ritualistic. Correct. I mean, it's, it's a spiritual experience. So, uh, for those of you that you reside in Cyprus, you are all invited to join us. An experience with an me. An experience. <laughs> this uh, it cannot be uh, put in words. Honestly, usually I have too many words, <laughs> but I cannot put uh, the experience, so the feeling kind, in words. Yeah. No, honestly, honestly. Uh, last year when we, we visited the premiere and we attended the... Um, how, how, I don't know how to call it. It was, uh, it was like 
like a workshop, a, a, a live workshop that uh, it, it, it guided you through your mind, the time that you were creating the art and also made you come close to the paintings and the way you used the light and the sound and the smell, it made you feel that you were alone in that huge room and you could talk with each painting. I mean, it was honestly, it was uh, undescribable. Um, so we invite you to join us on Tuesday, the 17th of March, 2020 at 7 p.m. on Galerie Morphy in Limassol. Where is the premiere of the... Um, the opening of the exhibition. The opening, yes. <laughs> I use the premiere as if it's... Because it's like such a, like a movie, that's why I say a premiere. Yeah, I mean, but I like, I like <laughs> the, the premiere itself more poetic. <laughs> So thank you for adding poetry to, <laughs> to my How event. many days will the um, exhibition uh, be displayed there? Yes, it will open on the 17th and it will close on the 28th of March, of March which is a Saturday. And I should say that um, I will be honored at the opening by the presence of the First, First Lady, Lady of the Republic of Cyprus. Mrs. Anastasiado. So uh, for those of you that you love art, and you want to open your horizons uh, and joining the experience. At the background, you can see some of the main paintings that have arrived from New York. You, yes. you are one tenth. One tenth. There are so much more coming. See you all at my, uh, Tuesday, 17th of March at 7 p.m. Galerie Morphy in Limassol. Bye. Thank you, Yorgo, so Thank much. You. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I find that sometimes we are caught up uh, trying to achieve what we think is perfection, missing the imperfections that naturally, I believe, make something real and unique. The focal point in my creative world is to celebrate the diversity we see today around us and highlight its uh, beauty, which for some is nothing but shame and sometimes harsh, uh, painful judgment. concept of this exhibition titled Flesh vs. Spirit, I explore the direct interference in the relationship between the flesh, which is who we are as tangible beings and how we present ourselves externally, and the spirit, which is our inner spiritual divine world, and how these two components are affected from external social spiritual institutions in one specific religion uh, being the church. Now these two components in many occasions cannot coexist due to the two factors that I mentioned before that go against them. Equilibrium is the ultimate balance of the two spirit and flesh when there is a freedom of expression and the path for acceptance. I mainly attempt to transcribe um, life on dead wood, which I collect from the streets of uh, New York, from the trash that uh, people leave outside their houses and in a way I get this uh, stimulating satisfaction that I have the ability to give life and breath uh, to these um, dead pieces uh, and come back in an altered form.